Good evening and welcome back to the First Time Home Buyer Show. I'm your host, SD Class, and tonight we're chatting to an absolutely amazing guest, and I'm sure the background behind me looks extremely familiar. Last week we chatted to Papa Bowachi Adom about his journey through property investment, and tonight we chat to the one and only Hetty the Entrepreneur. How are you this evening? I'm so good, SD, and really excited to be here. Thank you so much for allowing us back into your beautiful home. And I introduced you as Hetty the Entrepreneur. Yes. So I'd like to know, is Hetty and Hetty the Entrepreneur, two separate people? Hetty the Entrepreneur is one person. Mm. I am an entrepreneur through and through. I love entrepreneurship, particularly African-led businesses. Mm. So who is Hetty at the core then? Hetty at the core is a Pan-Africanist, mm. uh, and a lover of our beautiful continent, an entrepreneur, and I really love to travel and meet new people as well. Right, and I know that from your journey, like I said, I've seen your social media platforms, and you really what I love about you and Papa, your, your vision and your journey that you've been on is you're so transparent. Mm -hmm. You're always willing to share and give help. And so I want to find out from you, because you're obviously a mentor to a few people. Yes. Um, being a mentor, what does that mean for you? You know, being a mentor really is walking a journey with our mentees um, in terms of their businesses. So I work with numerous African-led businesses. Some of them are in the property space, others are in other types of businesses. It's walking a journey, really understanding your mentee's vision, what they want to accomplish with their lives and their businesses, and helping them put proper structures in place to achieve their goals. So why African? Why did you, I know we're South African, we in Africa, and yeah. But I want to know why you, you chose that as your main goal. Because we could have worked anywhere. We could have gone to the States, to the UK. Yes. You chose to stay at home yes. and work, you know, child of the soil. Why here? Absolutely. So my mentorship takes place online, so it's digital. And I have a specific passion for African-led businesses because I believe that those are the businesses that are going to transform our continent and also the world's perception of Africa. I believe that we have creative people, innovative businesses that can really trailblaze our economies and take us to the next frontier. So I really want to be able to play my role and my part in transforming our continent. But, and I also, interestingly enough, work with quite a number of entrepreneurs around the world. So there's one lady in particular, she's based in Russia, but she's from Ghana. Yes. So I love that beauty of being in the online mm -hmm. space because it opens up the world to you. So COVID-19 did not affect Haiti the Entrepreneur? You know, I would honestly really be amiss to say that it didn't affect me at all. We've all had our moments of introspection. So, you know, when the pandemic hit, our retail stores were closed, mm. our factory was closed, and we were in hard lockdown. And I remember actually having a conversation with myself where I thought, okay, Haiti, you are forced to slow down now. If you could do anything else, aside from your retail business, what would it be? And I'd always done mentorship, but rather on a small scale. And I thought to myself, I want to be able to impact my continent. I want to be able to impact businesses. And that's when I really ramped up my mentorship business. And I'm so proud and happy for all of the mentors, uh, mentees that I've been able to impact. So in 2020, I was able to materially impact 100 African-led businesses and I thought I would be impacting them through mentorship but I didn't realize the impact they would have on me mm. through just giving me a sense of purpose yeah and I know we always talk about the wall of fame behind us and yeah your name is also <laughs> yeah you, you in an article you, you've done a few things tell us a little bit about what you've achieved up until now all right, so together with Papa, we uh, own the largest African print retail brand in South Africa, and that's called PNH Boutique. We've got PNH Homes, which is our cash positive uh, business where we um, uh, deal with residential properties. And then, of course, I've got my mentorship business, which is Hetty the Entrepreneur. Um, and, you know, when you're in business, you don't really in it to accumulate accolades. You're kind of in it to work within your business. So when the accolades come, you're like, oh my goodness, I didn't think that anybody's recognizing what we're doing. So along the way, we've been able to become Mail and Guardian top 200 young South Africans, top 50 uh, thriving female founders, uh, top 1,000 African voices. And all of this is validation mm. that we are on the right track. So we're deeply, deeply grateful. So you've spoken about what you've achieved and we can see it. And I know mm. I love what you said that 
when you start something, you don't know that you're going to get these awards or, or become this person um, going in on your journey and Absolutely. someone who people look up to. You yes. inspire me. You know, I watch <laughs> your videos and I learn so much from you. And we know what you've achieved, but let's say, because you know when starting every business, you need an, an end goal, yes. your, your main goal. What does the future for Haiti the Entrepreneur look like? It's interesting because every year I try to challenge myself. I try to have a new goal for myself. So in 2021, my goal is to materially impact 300 African-led businesses to monetize in the online space through the use of digital products. So that is my big goal for 2021. And then once that's achieved, then we'll tackle 2022. I'm just kind of taking it one bite at a time for now. Let's double tap on that monetize because you call yourself the monetize guru. Yes. Monetization guru, yes. So where did that name come from? Why, where did that, what inspired that for you? To be honest with you, it's inspired by my own journey, ST. So, um, you know, when I began the mentorship program, I realized that the best way to actually impact businesses is through digital products. So that was through, you know, webinars, masterclasses, courses, etc. And I realized that I was able to generate an income through those products and also teach people how to do the same as well. And so I realized that this is actually a replicatable formula. People can monetize in the online space through their skills, their passion, their experience, their talent can be monetized and a lot of people don't know this. And so I'm really passionate about teaching people how they can convert what comes naturally to them, what they're really good at, into a monetizable business online. Right. And I want to go back to uh, bringing you and Papa back together because we co a lot of this you can't do by yourself. Yes. So there's a support structure we need. Absolutely. And tell us about that journey with you, like when going along and a lot of the awards you've gotten with Papa by yes. your side. Yes. So what was that like? You know, having that support. Let me take it back to uh, last week. We spoke about a power team. Yes. That Papa refers to as a tribe. Yes. You know, that's your tribe. Yes. So what, what was that journey like? You know, it's absolutely remarkable. Um, you know, doing life with Papa is an absolute privilege because we are able to boost each other up. So even in our property business, for example, he's the numbers guy. He knows how to figure it out. Is this, does this make sense? Are we going to make money from this? And I really appreciate that. And then I also come in and I say, okay, but let's look at the aesthetics. What are we doing from a marketing perspective? How are we putting ourselves out there? So by being able to leverage on our collective strengths, we're able to build each other up and create magic together. So it's it's truly such an honor to be able to have not only a life partner, but a business partner as well. You're each other's mentors. Yes. At the end of the day, which is absolutely beautiful. I love that. And I know you, you've got a lot of businesses and you're obviously mm. still planning more and they're all growing. They're booming at this time, which is amazing. So well yeah. done. Well Thank done you. Um, I want to take it back to being a mentor and the responsibilities. We briefly spoke about it last week with Papa mm. about everyone. You can't be everyone's mentor. Yeah. People have a vibe they're going for. Or yes. Maybe this person does not speak your language. I'm, mm. I'm myself, I'm very for, uh, spiritual kind of mm. level. So if my mentor can, you know, align with my vision yeah. is what we need. So what type of mentor would you say you are? And what would you say your biggest responsibility is being that mentor for other people? So for me, I am what you would refer to as a results-based mentor. So I'm very much results-based. I've had several mentors over the years. And a lot of times when people think of mentorship, they think of having a coffee date with someone, mm -hmm. uh, maybe chatting about your business and then you part ways. I'm very much into the practical implementation into your business so that you can see the return of your investment. You can actually see the return of the work that you're doing. So we, I like to put in practical steps to say this this is what we want to accomplish and then we have timelines so that we hold each other accountable and we're able to come back to the drawing board to see what's working what isn't working what can be tweaked etc so I'm very much a results-based mentor and you're absolutely right I think it's worth investing the time to see which type of mentor is good for you it might not be Hetty but it might be somebody else mm. I really encourage people to look for mentors people who are a GPS 
yes, mm. to show them the path to go because then the road to success is so much shortened mm. because you don't have to go through it alone. How, how do I find the right mentor? Can you guide me with that? How do I? Absolutely. Number one, you want to do research. Mm -hmm. So you want to look into the person's background. Where is their area of specialization? So mine, for example, I'm very strong on marketing and sales. But if somebody is looking to get their finances in order, I then refer them to Papa. If somebody is looking to, from an HR perspective, I've got somebody else to refer them to. So not everybody that comes with me ends with me. Mm -hmm. It really depends on what your needs are within your business. And you want to be able to go to somebody that responds to those needs. So do your research, look at their track record, look at where their strengths lie, and then also look and see if you've got a good rapport with each other. Do you enjoy their teaching style? You know, everybody responds differently. Mm -hmm. So it's important to make sure that you're paired together with the right mentor. And I love that you, because uh, I know there's mentors who will not refer you, who yeah. will sit with you and try and make it work because mm. they, they want to be your mentor. Yeah. And I love that you actually refer people because like you, we're not, everyone is not your fit. Absolutely. So in order, to, and you're able to let go. Of yes. It, you know, because you have, you have your tribe. Yes. Our team. Yes. You have that. You don't need to keep looking and yes. fishing for it, which I love. I just, before we end off, because um, I know we're still going to chat to Papa in a minute, um, what, so we're talking about home and we're talking to first time home buyers, your journey to being a homeowner, mm -hmm. what was that like? You know, it's, it's actually been really quite interesting because, you know, we purchased uh, this uh, property and which we absolutely love. It's in the heart of the Maboneng precinct. It's a heartbeat of entrepreneurial energy and creative spirit. So we also feed off the energy of this environment. And then when it comes to our property investment journey, I must be honest with you, ST, one of my biggest limiting beliefs when it came to investing in property was the assumption that you need to have wards of money, like truckloads of money in order to invest. So imagine our surprise with Papa and I when we discovered that, number one, you don't have to have wards of money. Number two, you can invest in cash positive properties. Mm -hmm. You know, often at times you, you, when you hear of people investing in properties, it's cash negative. So they have to add more money every single month. Their, their properties are not serving them. Mm -hmm. So I have been pleasantly surprised by our property journey and really taking it one step at a time. And the way that we've done it has taught me and has been able to teach our mentees that they can be able to do it too, exactly where they are. So you don't have to wait for 10 years time. You can actually do it right now. Mm -hmm. And I like that you said that, so that was one of the things that you assumed. Yes. You had no idea that, no, you do not need yeah. lots of money but what was one of the rewarding things for you when you when you got this home what was it about it that you love I know that you said you're in you're central um, and this is it's very funky vibey and this it speaks to you and Papa that's like when we came in that's exactly the vibe yeah. you gave us energetic fun loving yes. but what else was rewarding about making that first purchase realizing that I don't need a lot of money and yes. it's mine now Yes. And it's positive, cash positive. Yes. I think really it is that feeling of it's mine now. Mm. It's mine now. You know, when, when you look at our communities, owning property is a big thing. It means that you always have a roof over your head. It means that there's a place that you can call home. It means that you can make it your own. You can decorate it and let it be a representation of who you are. So even if I'm not here and you walk through the door, this space should be able to tell you a story about me. Mm -hmm. And for me, that is something that's truly special. So what, what does, we asked Papa this last week, what does home mean for you? So what does it mean for Hetty? Home for me is the place where I can just be and rest, mm. where I can replenish, where I can recharge, where I can truly just be myself. That is home for me. I love that so much, Hetty. We're going to go over to Papa now, but I just want to thank you before you leave. Thank you so much for taking the time, sitting with us. And I love to hear from different mentors yes. because we're at the point in our life right now where we, we need you. Absolutely. We need you guys more than anything. Yeah. And just to find the right one. And that's what's so important. That's one of the most important things I'm taking from today's conversation is find the right one for you. Yes. 
which I really appreciate. So thank you so much, Haiti. Thank you, Esti. We'll see you guys again soon, hopefully. There should probably be a part three. <laughs> At this rate, there's going to be so much more. But thank you so much. We're going to go over to Papa again, and we're going to chat a little bit more about numbers. You heard Papa is a numbers guy, so let's dive into that. All right, as you know, without further ado, we're back with Papa this evening. How are you doing today? Excellent. Thanks for having me back. Thank Here we go. Thank you for coming back. Um, you've, you seem very ready. We just heard you're a numbers guy, but before we dive into that, there's something I want to touch on with you that we just spoke to Hetty about, which is this assumption of what property is like before you even go into it. And you also said that one of the assumptions is that we, we need a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And that's not true. What are the other perceptions around property that maybe you've heard from your mentees and you had to pull them, pull them out of that journey? And what? I think one of the uh, two biggest uh, uh, perceptions that I've had to work on for myself and, and with others is especially that if one's gonna get um, onto property, it's specifically gotta be uh, you know, the, the area that they're going to be uh, looking into. Uh, that, that's one of the, the, the biggest things. And then also the second thing w which often comes up, especially preventing people from getting involved, is that, oh no, what am I going to do when my tenants don't pay? Mm. And, and the thing is that, I mean, that is a, that is a valid concern, but I mean, the majority of, of, of people generally do pay. And there's well mitigating um, actions that one can take to ensure that the type of tenants that one gets um, can provide peace of mind. Because the main thing getting into property is uh, we get into property because we want peace of mind. Uh, there's no access to passive income if we don't have peace of mind. And, and uh, those are the things that one needs to just take cognizance of. Yeah, you're right. It is a mind game. And remember, we spoke about a few books last week um, where it is really about the power of your mind and your mindset. Mm. And that's how you can kind of change the narrative and make it easier for yourself, make the ride easier. Now, just before we go, we, we just spoke to Hedy about how she kind of mentors people. So let's find out a little bit about you, how you, so let's say these are the challenges. Will my tenant pay and is it, am I, is it gonna be a passive income at the end of the day? What do you do as a mentor just to, to help ease my mind? Mm. Look, I think the, the, the first thing that I like to start off with is just finding out what, what actually is your goal? Or what are you trying to achieve here? Because every person's situation is different. And then in understanding uh, what the goals are, I mean, if somebody's goals actually is in terms of, I've read some of these things in these books, um, I want to have money coming in um, every single month rather than taking money out and this is the area that I'm looking at. Then I test and say, okay, cool, is that actually the correct area? These are other opportunities that are also available. Uh, what type of um, structure are you going to be uh, looking at? Uh, and j just the main thing is actually how can I assist them to be able to achieve those goals? I do find often um, one is almost looking at a specific strategy because they don't know all the other strategies that are actually uh, available and, and and for me then I just come in there to just be act as a guide act as a guide where I can provide more information more information in a manner that is uh, easier to digest um, so that one can then be able to assess for themselves what's going to make better sense for for them and also for for their family so you said you make it a little bit easier to di digest which I love so let's talk about you know you're the finance guy you're the money guy the numbers guy so let's talk about these numbers. We, we talk, I mean, first time home buyers, do we know what ROI is, return on investment? Do we know, how do we look for these things? How are we sure that this is the one? <coughs> how do you then explain that to your mentees or, or how can you explain it to me today in layman's terms? Look, I think it's to keep it quite uh, simple. I mean, there's lots of different uh, numbers that uh, one can look at, but of course, if one is looking to become a, a first time uh, buyer, in most cases for me, it's, it's first time investors. Uh, that, that's the space that I play in quite a lot with. And I just relate my journey because my journey is, is, is quite a simple one where obviously I'd read a lot of books and now I was going through analysis paralysis, going through all these different types of properties and not really uh, going anywhere. And, and what actually happened is that I sat through uh, in a presentation uh, where my uh, mentor was there and he presented to a room full of, I think we're about 100 people. And when he presented there, he showcased uh, an example where we could participate. It was a once in a lifetime opportunity to participate in a deal where we could buy up to 40 cash flow positive properties. Okay. So he explained it and I thought this makes a lot of sense. Then he invited everybody who was interested on the Saturday to come and view this building to see these cash flow positive properties. I'd heard about this, I'd read about this, I wanted to see if it was real. I think there were about 50 people that put their hands up. I went there on the Saturday at the allotted time and here's the saddest thing uh, when I got there, and I'll let the viewers know. We were 12 people there. We were 12 people there. 
I was the only black person in that space there. In the meeting room, everybody was mixed, uh, different races and so on, and I was the only black person that came to view this opportunity. And I didn't understand why that was the case. And uh, what actually happened afterwards is I looked at everything, I looked at the building, the numbers made sense, and, and I put up my hand and I said, I'd like to participate here. Um, at the time, we tread cautiously, and uh, we went and we applied with the bank, and the bank approved for us to purchase four of the units. Now, when I look back, because it's, it's been five years since we purchased those, when I actually look back, I mean, the bank at the time, they would have granted us to purchase, um, I think it would have been 20 of those units because you know, we were both working and we had saved quite a bit and so on, and they would have granted that, and we didn't. We only took four of the units. And do you know how many times those uh, apartments, do you know how many times the, the, the tenants have skipped rent? Oh, wow. They have never skipped rent. Mm. They have never skipped rent in, in, in that period of, of five years, and that's when it started to trickle into me as I was going through our entrepreneurship journey, but, but this type of model makes sense. Mm. Uh, you, you know, we were cautious, some people didn't even participate, uh, but this model actually made sense. And it was then that I said, okay, I'm gonna look to replicate uh, this type of model. Those units, uh, at the time when we purchased them, they were, I kid you not, they were 160,000 rand each. What? It was 160,000 rand uh, per apartment. Wow. Uh, the, the rentals that we get on each uh, apartment, they range between uh, 4,200 and 5,000 rand. Mm -hmm. That's per apartment. Yeah. Um, and, and so that, that was the thing where I looked into it and like I said, there's lots of jargon. There's lots of jargon in terms of figuring out return and internal rate of return and all types of different things. But sometimes the easiest way to look at it is how much money will I get into my account after all the expenses are paid? I purchase this investment. What's going to be my bond? What are the other expenses? And will I get any money extra in my account? Or do I have to spend extra money every time to pay for the, all the other expenses? And that's something that, uh, that I just look to share with other people and, and, and move forward from there. Because you talk about the jargon and the little things, and I'm sure when you first went, you said, okay, cool, you understood what he was saying, and you took a chance and you went. And it is quite sad that you were the only black man there at, at this time and on this day. And look now, you know, we, we reap what we saw. And you're sitting happily and you've made that investment. Now, I, I know you're a, a mentor, but tell me about, do we have more black people investing in property now? Oh, no, look, I mean, I think the specific reason why uh, no, there's lots of black investors, don't, don't, don't misunderstand me. I think the specific reason why, and that's, that's why I've, I've had to, I engage with um, other investors and other mentees, right? It was the area that was the biggest stumbling block because the area actually was in Johannesburg CBD. Mm. Okay. And for a lot of people, that was like no-go area, you know? But the thing is that for me, I was focusing on the numbers and the opportunity and I was trusting uh, my guide because the view had been, you know, if you go into places like Johannesburg CBD, buildings are hijacked, uh, tenants don't pay, uh, it's a mission, I don't want to go there and things like that. But I found contrary, contrary to that, what I actually did find, you actually find the, the working class, they really are focused on making sure that the roof over their head, they maintain those p payments. It's actually more important to them mm -hmm. than somebody where, you know, their rental is 10, 15,000 rand. Uh, they've got other types of uh, credit and liabilities that are chasing after them. So sometimes to skip the, the landlord's uh, rental payment, it's an easier thing to do as opposed to in, in, in the CBD. And so since then, that's why I've gone through and I've looked at um, other types of uh, places within there. We've invested in other um, apartments and other buildings um, within the uh, Johannesburg CBD. And I've formed relationships with different, uh, different agents, different agents where we've, we've had a connection, where they, they send me deals, and often uh, quite a few times in the week and I'm not somebody who's going around purchasing, you know, three, four properties per week. I mean, and so that's where, you know, sometimes then I let my network know, or I let my mentees know this opportunity is available. Um, these are the type of numbers. This is something that I think might make sense and things like that. Because you're right, the, ter the, the area determines the tenants. Mm. And I mean, jo Johannesburg CBD is scary. I mean, mm. if I was there, I also probably wouldn't have, been, have invested in it because you think that they're not going to pay. But you're right, the people or your tenants that you, you tend to get, yes, I love that you said that these are the people who will pay because the most important thing to them is security first, where other people are worrying about other things, which I love. So back to us knowing as first-time homebuyers what our return on investment is, and you all about cash positive <laughs> property. And just like what other things do we look for? What is key 
when looking at the property, it's the area you've mentioned. What other things is key to look for to know that this property will be cash positive? Well, look, I mean, obviously the, the biggest mistake that I find uh, that people will make is sometimes, okay, fine, that they've selected an area and they're going through for it. Perhaps they're only looking at uh, what the bond is going to be and then they're looking at what the, the rental is going to be. But, I mean, there, there are other things that, that come into play. Uh, simple basics like uh, the levies, if there are levies that need to be paid, uh, your, your rates and taxes and things like that, as well as insurance or maintenance, those all need to be added so you can see if I put all of these type of expenses, how does that compare to the rental that I will achieve? The second thing actually that makes sense as well is looking at the specific place and seeing, can I add value to this place? Can I add value that will allow me to get more rental than either what is the average or what the current uh, tenants are paying here? And there, there are simple things to look at in terms of adding value, either a light uh, renovation, uh, things like perhaps you know adding a, a cleaning service or things like adding um, a free Wi-Fi. Um, so there's all types of different things one can look to, but it's, it's also looking at the value that one can add that will make sense for the type of tenants that would uh, partake in your type of uh, place that you've purchased and the area as well. Right. Mm. Um, I want to take it back to, because the whole, I like that the session is really about mentorship. That's what I kept with speaking to you and Hetty. And being a mentee, we are trusting you with so much decisions, you're holding our hand, you, you're helping us, you're guiding us. Mm. And your responsibility being one, because I mean, I've never been a mentor, but would you say that being a mentor and advising people on something that you're clearly clued up on, that journey for you of being a mentor, what was that like for you? Well, I mean, it's, it's quite enlightening. I think what I have seen is that uh, back when, when I started, I wish I had somebody like guiding me throughout uh, the way uh, that I'm guiding people. Uh, at, at the same time, I, mean, I think because I'm, I'm a more practical person and I like to focus more on, on, on the numbers. So sometimes when somebody will, will talk to me about something that they, they're thinking about or an area in, in property that they're thinking of, it's fine because it, you know, when it comes to property, it, it is emotive. It's, yeah. it's emotional, it's, it's big investments and things like that. But what I have come to see is that, you know, I'll just give an example where I had uh, somebody where they were looking at, uh, you know, they, they were looking at investing and there were places that they were looking at specifically around Santon. And this was going to be like their first type of investment that they were looking into. And when I probed further, I realized what they really wanted was what, you know, they'd read about in these books with Robert Kiyosaki and things like that and passive income. And what they were buying into was going to be taking quite a bit of money out of the account every single month. Yeah. And, and then I guided them and I just said, here's another type of opportunity. And it doesn't even cost that much money because the places that he was looking at was uh, 800 or closer to about a million. And, and with that same availability of credit that the bank would have been able to get him, I was able to guide him and show, look, here's an opportunity. You can actually purchase three or four properties with that same amount, 800, uh, 1 million. And, and with that, I mean, look at how much money will come into your account uh, every single month. Um, look at these type of buildings, they actually managed uh, quite well. They're cheaper and the tenants are going to pay. So, uh, you know, this is another type of opportunity that is available that you can just compare the two. Mm. And when he was able to compare the two on, on paper, it's like, no, but this makes uh, perfect sense. For him, obviously something that was important is he didn't want to keep coming back and forth into mm. the Johannesburg CBD. And with us, we do um, offer as uh, we manage uh, people's uh, properties as well. So there's something where we're able to manage uh, their properties as well and give them peace of mind. So that was passive income at its finest. Mm -hmm. And I know passive income leads us to financial freedom. So just before we close up, what is financial freedom for Papa? So financial freedom, it's, it's different things for different people. I think for me, uh, and, and it's part of the goal, that's what we work towards, is financial freedom is actually being able to uh, make decisions that are, are best for you and your family, regardless of the uh, money situation. You see, because sometimes, I mean, uh, the, the things either in terms of where you want to live or where you want to, to be, or where you want to work, and sometimes those uh, decisions, you, you're making them solely based on, on financial uh, reasons. Mm -hmm. But if one's able to get to a point where you're making those uh, decisions based on what's most important for you, and, and money is a secondary concern, then I think that's the direction to go towards financial freedom. Yeah. So I just want to close off and I, you can have a few last words for the viewers because I'd also like to ask, the first, especially for first-timers, first-time homebuyers, I wanted to find out the importance of having a mentor. And I think 
that there is obviously a cost involved and maybe you can't afford to have a mentor right now or maybe you have the wrong mentor but you, you're not sure. What do we do as first timers in that case? <laughs> uh, I think the most important thing to understand is that uh, we, we all spend money. Yeah. Okay. We all spend money and in the way that we spend money, either it's as an expense or we are investing. Okay. And I think the, the most important uh, thing to understand is that uh, I don't know, I might have mentioned before, people will ask me, this property here, is it, is it a good investment or is it a bad investment? And I spoke about it before, is that I don't know if it's a good investment or a bad investment. My, my thing is, are you a good investor or a bad investor? And a bad investor is somebody who's partaking to something and they don't have the education. Yeah. So the, the thing is, for me, I'm always uh, trying to uh, partake my knowledge to allow people to get educated. Mm. And listen, don't get me wrong, I'm, uh, I get people coming to me all the time within the industry where they ask, but Papa, I mean, you do all of these sessions on, on social media for free and, and all of these things. Why are you telling the, the people all of these things that, I mean, uh, you, that you've learned and, and you spend money on and so on and so forth? What, what are you doing? Right. But for me, that's, that, that's not where my heart is. Mm. Uh, for me, I want more people to know so that the, the, the pot can get bigger. Of course, there are different elements where sometimes there's a, there's a cost involved. But, but it's important that people are able to invest in themselves. Because once you invest in yourself, you've got that knowledge yeah. and that you're able to impart um, yourself and your family and you own that for yourself. And we grew up knowing that education is an investment. And having a mentor who educates you, it might not be um, theory or anything, but it's property, is still education. So I think that's what we need to know as a people is to just keep investing not only in assets or something that, because I feel like education or, or after I'm done with my mentor, I don't have like a degree, a piece of paper that I can see, you know, mm. I, we did it. And I think that's something we need to kind of, again, mind thing, um, change your mindset and understand that if I do pay for a mentor at the end of the day, mm. I still am educating and feeding myself. Yeah, and I think that, that that's very key. And I mean, not only that, because it, it is a normal thing where what certificate yeah. am I going to get uh, after this? But this is something that I got to experience when I went through my own mentoring uh, many years ago, is I really felt the impact in my bank account. Mm. And because I could see the impact in my bank account, I knew, okay, I'm on the correct path here. I didn't need a certificate because the evidence is already in my bank account. Yeah. And, and what I got to see was that the, because it was a real clinger, I mean, we've spoken before about property and entrepreneurship and the, and the link. Yeah. And where the penny dropped for me was when, you know, after building all our retail stores and some are open and some had to be closed and it's, it's a very emotional, it's a very emotional journey. And when I looked through that whole process, I was thinking, but this is very strange. Because my tenants have kept paying all of this time. They really have kept paying all of this time, and at the time we, only, we had a couple of units. And then I realized, why don't I grow the number of units? Why don't I investigate in terms of what other areas, what other types of buildings are gonna make sense, mm. and invest uh, more there, and then, and then one can just uh, take it forward. Yeah, mm. I agree. Thank you so much again for sitting with us this evening. And I really appreciate, I love, again, we said this last week about, if you need to be a good investor. You know, it's not about a good investment, which I want to echo on. And again, what I'm taking away from tonight is investing in yourself, which is very key. So thanks again, Papa. Thank you so much. Thank you to our viewers at home. That is all we have time for tonight. Again, I think take away to invest in yourself. That is key. Thank you so much.